Sometimes being diagnosed with any type of cancer, and in this case particularly lung cancer, can be incredibly difficult for the individual. It was really quite a revelation, you know, and, and it, it um, sort of turned my life upside down as to what I'd always known. And it was, it was a bit like a death, I think, to the extent that my old life had changed and gone and suddenly this new one was in its place. Some of the ways that people have talked about coping with their diagnosis have included simple things like remembering to have a cry, have a laugh. You're still a person. You need to remember who you are. Some of the other things that people have said are things like focusing day to day on what you're doing and what you can achieve. Perhaps set your limits around what you know you can do and what you can't do. Do those things that you feel most comfortable doing. If you're still well enough and you feel like working and you're able to work, continue to do that. Some of the things that are more challenging, perhaps they can be put away to another day. When our eldest son was killed, people would cross the road so they didn't have to talk to you about this. And I wanted to talk about it. And I think it's the same with cancer. People don't want to talk about it because they're, they're shy about it. But um, they shouldn't. You should discuss it and talk to your friends. And My family were more upset than I was because I look at it this way. You've only got one life, so you've got to... You really got to get on with it. And so I put my back to the wall and I thought, well, I'm not going anywhere. And uh, they were more upset. So they got the message, they were not to worry, that I was going to be all right. And that's how I handle it. When I uh, was faced with the, the, the nasty little chore of, of telling the kids, um, it was something I didn't want to do because, I mean, I sort of felt for them more than I felt for myself, I think. Um, because, you know, it was going to be a burden for them. And uh, I knew it was going to be very upsetting as well. So, <clears throat> anyway, we went around there and, and uh, my, to my daughter's place and, and uh, I said, she's made a cuppa, of course, as she always does. It. And I said, yeah, I need this. And I said, and you're going to need it too. I said, I've got a bit of news for you. Really, it was traumatic. Uh, it's very hard emotionally and uh, you know I think that was probably one of the things I think it's been one of the most emotional trips that I've had in my life really. I had the nicest GP he's since retired and he said to me now look Maxine he said they're going to take over down there he said, you'll still need us. And it was so true. I think it's important to remember that um, the, the management of lung cancer can be quite complicated. It can uh, vary with time and it does need to be individualised. And uh, for this reason, um, sometimes a second opinion is important. And, uh, and a second opinion uh, is commonly sought. Um, the, uh, it's not seen as a slight on the, uh, on the initial opinion. And it, it can be very reassuring uh, to everyone uh, if there is a second view. Um, and I would certainly encourage um, both uh, patients and their family that if they are uncertain about the initial advice to, to ask their GP to arrange a, a second opinion. Well, I found I had to be guided by the doctors and that. I mean, they knew all the technical bits. I didn't. They understood the disease. I didn't. Um, you know, most of us know the word cancer, but we know very little about it, how it works and, and what the treatments really are. I mean, I found that I couldn't make a sensible decision on what to do about my treatment and stuff because I didn't have the, the knowledge to make the decision. It's good to consider the, the cancer journey as a journey along a road. And we do come to forks in the road, and those forks are what-if forks. What if I go here, or what if I go there? And when you reach one of these what-if forks, it's good to have someone like a general practitioner as a trusted advisor, as a mentor, to allow you to make decisions. And if you're not sure, get somebody else's opinion. Always get a second opinion. Life's too short.